Hello, everyone. Now, I know that it's hard to keep up on top of what's going on in the Holy Land, but if you want to know more about what's happening here in Israel, I'm Aaron Porras, and this is the Weekly Review. The second civilian vehicle targeted by Hamas's anti-tank missiles, leaving two more Israelis near Gaza seriously injured and one more dead. The barrage from the Strip continuing all night long and showing little signs of slowing. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> Israeli civilians, men, women, children, and the elderly, spending Tuesday night and Wednesday morning in bomb shelters and stairwells. Rocket sirens continuing to blare across central and southern Israel as terror groups Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad launching salvo after salvo to overcome the Iron Dome defense system's limits. And they're targeting indiscriminately towards Israel's population centers. Roughly 1,100 rockets and counting fired from the Strip in little over 48 hours. Israel, for its part, responding with heavy airstrikes, targeting terror group infrastructure and command units. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister Benny Gantz both promising to punish those responsible. At least 43 in Gaza reported killed by the Hamas Health Ministry. The IDF claiming that most are terror group commanders and fighters, while some are civilian casualties primarily due to Hamas's own rockets falling back in the Strip. Still, Hamas's rocket fire slowed, but not over. Sirens still sounding in the southern border regions. Israel police working with IDF forces to restore calm and provide aid in affected areas. We've had more than 300 rockets that have landed inside the cities, inside the populated areas. And unfortunately, until now, if we look at the numbers and the people that have been injured and killed, we've had five Israelis who were killed uh, in the different sites as a result of those rockets from the Hamas being fired directly into the different cities. The death toll, meanwhile, in Israel as of this morning, updated to six. One Israeli killed and another two seriously wounded by a Hamas anti-tank missile targeting their jeep Wednesday morning. Another death last night in Rishon Lezion, just south of Tel Aviv. A 50-year-old woman hit directly during a huge missile barrage targeting central Israel. Likewise, in Lod, a father and his 16-year-old daughter killed by a rocket that directly struck their home. Two women in Ashkelon as well, an elderly woman and her 32-year-old caregiver from India also killed. And three more civilians injured, including a five-year-old girl in Cholon, when an empty bus was struck then burst into flames. These just some of the many injuries across the country due to shrapnel, shock, and rushing to nearby shelters. Therefore, areas from the Negev Desert and Gaza border region all the way up to Netanya along the coast and Jerusalem to the east turned orange by the IDF Home Front Command. All citizens in these areas asked to keep crowds to a minimum and to stay as close to a shelter as possible. Additionally, Israeli civilians are ordered to steer clear of the Gaza border, where vehicles are targeted in particular, and where IDF officials say Gaza militants may breach the security barrier completely. Defense Minister Benny Gantz ordered an emergency call-up of border police to deploy in cities across the country on Thursday, as Arab Jewish violence and riots continued to escalate during the day after a night of unprecedented internal unrest. Reporting on the violence is ILTV's Hannah Rifkin. Oh 
On the backdrop of the Gaza violence, major cities with mixed Jewish and Arab Israeli or Arab Palestinian populations spiraled out of control on Wednesday night. Violent mobs of Arabs and Jews were seen taking to the streets in the cities of Jerusalem, Haifa, Lod, Akko, Jaffa, and Beersheba. Police said some 374 people were arrested over the riots. In Lod, where the unrest initially began, mobs of Arab citizens took to the streets for the second time on Wednesday night, despite a curfew imposed on the city. <laughs> איך שהגעתי לכיכר בכניסה באזור תעשייה, באו אליי איזה מאה ערבים, שאלו אותי, אתה יהודי או ערבי? אמרתי להם ערבי. ראו שהמבטא שלי זה לא ערבי, רצו אליי לאוטו, התחילו לזרוק עליי אבנים. מזל ולא היה מכונות מאחורה, עשיתי רוורס. נסעתי בפול גז ברוורס. כמעט נכנסתי באנשים, במכוניות, לא ראיתי כלום. ראיתי מוות, מוות, מוות. אתה יודע מה זה מוות? אנשים קופצים עליי עם אבנים, זורקים עליי אבנים. Over the past two nights in Lod, a Jewish man on his way to pray was stabbed, though remains in stable condition. Dozens of cars were set ablaze, storefronts destroyed, and a synagogue was torched as police evacuated Jewish families from their homes. Though the unrest quickly spread from Lod to other major cities with mixed populations. At the end of the night, a Jewish-owned hotel was set ablaze in Akko. A Jewish man was attacked by a small mob in Jerusalem, while an Arab man was stabbed by Jews in the Machna Yehuda market in the city. Police and civilian cars were set ablaze in numerous cities across the country, and Jewish and Arab storefronts were destroyed. However, the most disturbing incidents, including the attempted lynching of a Jewish man in his 30s by an Arab mob in Akko and the attempted lynching of an Arab man by a mob of Jewish extremists in Tel Aviv's neighboring city of Bat Yam. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu issuing a statement to the public on Wednesday night, vowing to put an end to the domestic violence, saying that Hamas rockets were targeting all Israeli citizens, Jews and Arabs alike. Israel. מה שקורה בערי ישראל בימים האחרונים הוא בלתי נסבל. אנחנו ראינו פורעים ערבים, מציתים בתי כנסת, מציתים מכוניות, מסתערים על שוטרים, פוגעים באזרחים שלווים וחפים מפשע. זה דבר שאנחנו לא יכולים לקבל אותו, זה אנרכיה. שום דבר לא מצדיק את זה, ואני אגיד לכם יותר מזה, שום דבר לא מצדיק לינץ' של ערבים ביהודים, ושום דבר לא מצדיק לינץ' של יהודים בערבים. אנחנו לא נקבל את זה. זה לא אנחנו. לא האלימות הזאת, לא הפרעות הזאת, אנחנו נחזיר את השלטון ואת המשילות לערי ישראל בכל מקום, בכל הערים. Though as additional police and even the military are set to be deploying in cities around the country, in an attempt to put an end to the violence, Israelis are bracing for yet another violent night, both externally and from within. Well, it's Jerusalem Day, the anniversary of Israel's reunification of the holy city after the war of 1967. But on the back of ongoing protests, riots, and clashes in Jerusalem, the mood in Israel's capital city is far from celebratory. Viewer discretion is advised. The following videos may be hard for many to watch. <laughs> Jerusalem descending into a war zone the likes of which has not been seen in the city in many, many years. Widespread violence between Palestinians and Israeli police continuing now following nearly nightly clashes throughout the entire Muslim holy month of Ramadan, but seemingly coming to a head with Jerusalem Day celebrations set to start Monday afternoon. And among the deadliest encounters so far, a Palestinian lynch mob attacking an Israeli Jewish driver, causing him to lose control of the vehicle and ram into one of the rioters. The driver, Roi Mordechai, explaining that he was trying to escape the mobs as they reportedly sprayed him in the face with pepper spray and attempted to force him and his passenger out of the car while pelting the vehicle with stones and cinder blocks. <laughs> I'm 
מגיע לפה כבר, אין לי, אין לי יותר את מי לעקוף, אין לי לאן להתקדם, אני פשוט מתחיל לעשות הלוך חזור במקום כמו אופרה, השמשות אה, מתנפצות, אה, נכנסים עוד אבנים, עוד אבנים לרכב, אה, אה, גז פלפל נכנס לנו לתוך הרכב עד שבשלב מסוים אני כבר, אה, האוטו נעצר, אני נתקע פה ב, בביתון. לוקחים את הדלתות, ממשיכים להרביץ לנו עשרות אה, ערבים, רוצחים, חיות, נכנסים ופשוט אה, מכים בנו עד שמגיע שוטר ושוטר אה, אחד מכל השוטרים שנמצאים פה למטה, שוטר בודד, מגיע ומסיים את האירוע. Mordechai and his passenger then heading to hospital for treatment, while the Palestinian who was hit is in unknown condition, though in the video he is seen walking away from the crash. All in all, so far, over 300 Palestinians have been injured, according to the Palestinian Red Crescent. And at least seven Israeli civilians, Jewish and Arab, including a baby girl, have been hospitalized due to the violence, as well as at least 21 police officers. Israeli police doing everything they can on the ground to quash the escalations in Jerusalem, including using stun grenades, blockades, and water cannons in and around the Temple Mount complex, also known as the Haram al-Sharif Plaza outside the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Muslim worshippers, demonstrators, and rioters, for their part, throwing stones and fireworks at police while lighting fires, and even waving the green flags of the Hamas terror organization. And not just in Jerusalem, either. Clashes having spread overnight to Nazareth, Haifa, and Hebrew University in Jerusalem, among other places as well. Palestinian protesters in the capital today declaring a victory. <laughs> לא נאפשר לאף גורם קיצוני לערער את השקט בירושלים. נשליט בחוק וסדר, בתקיפות ובאחריות. נמשיך לשמור על חופש הפולחן לכל הדתות, אבל לא נאפשר הפרות סדר אלימות. באותה נשימה אני אומר לארגוני הטרור, ישראל תגיב בעוצמה על כל מעשה תוקפנות מרצועת עזה. Meanwhile, all this just hours ahead of planned parades through the Old City as part of Jerusalem Day celebrations, honoring Israel's reunification of the city from Jordan in 1967. Police, government officials, and parade organizers ignoring security warnings to at least alter the routes this year so that they avoid Muslim areas of the city. The petitioners arguing that any demonstration through East Jerusalem, for one, would only serve to inflame tensions that only started to calm down in the early afternoon. In fact, to preemptively ease tensions, police already issued a ban on Jewish groups from even visiting the Temple Mount on Jerusalem Day, an act that itself received protest and condemnation by pro-Israeli Jewish groups. Uh, our own police, the Israeli police, has sadly denied us to go up there, and instead we go to the Western Wall, but that is not how we understand full redemption. We want to go up to our Temple Mount. Uh, we want equal rights there. The Israeli Supreme Court has decided that we have a right to pray there. We have a right to go there. And it's the heart of Judaism. And this moment is bittersweet. On the one hand, we celebrate Jerusalem Day. On the other hand, we realize that Jerusalem is not fully reunited and we are denied rights. And instead, the Jihad rules uh, this place. So we're going to continue to protest and to celebrate uh, at the same time. Uh, that's Jerusalem Day uh, 20. Again, though, these clashes coming not from nowhere, but from the growing animosity between Jews and Arabs in the city taking hold over the past few weeks. Tensions starting with the blockade around the Damascus Gate in Jerusalem during Ramadan, which was later removed, followed by a series of attacks against visibly Jewish Israelis posted to social media, and the planned eviction of several Palestinian families from the East Jerusalem's Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood. Furthermore, the violence being instigated and fanned by Palestinian extremist groups like Fatah's military wing and the Hamas terror group in Gaza, who are reportedly looking to cash in the violence for political points in the wake of canceled Palestinian elections. Meanwhile, an exchange of fire on Friday between three Palestinian gunmen and Israeli border police at an IDF base. The incident left two Palestinians dead and critically wounded the third. No soldiers were injured, according to the police, and three guns, three knives, and bullets were seized. The injured Palestinian was evacuated to a hospital in Afula in northern Israel. On Wednesday, Israeli troops killed a Palestinian teenager during clashes near the Palestinian city of Nablus, and an Israeli teen shot earlier in the week by a Palestinian gunman died of his injuries. My brother, Effie Gordon, he was murdered uh, because he was Jewish. It was not a robbery. People on the scene heard voices that they were like hate voices. Effie came to America to be by my sister's wedding and he was actually staying at my parents house which is in a in an area in Baltimore which is 
almost only um, religious Jews live there. It's a very Jewish area, and um, clear act of hatred, anti-Semitism was definitely involved. Those were interviews with family members of Ephraim Gordon, a 31-year-old Israeli man who was shot to death last week in Baltimore. Police say it was a botched robbery, but his family believes it was an anti-Semitic hate crime. Let's say hello to Hannah Rifkin, a producer and reporter here at ILTV, who grew up in Baltimore's Jewish community. Hannah, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So if you could just start by breaking down the story for us, what exactly happened here? What are the police saying about it? And what is this man's family saying? So Ephraim Gordon exited his vehicle at about midnight. He was on the way to his house when shots were fired and he was murdered. Unfortunately, po Baltimore police are saying, like you said, it's a botched robbery. However, because anti-Semitic slurs were heard, um, there is c question among the, among the people in the Jewish community as to what really happened and whether or not the police are doing all they can to really figure out what's going on here. And where are those witness counts coming from? Um, where are those reports coming from that say that those anti-Semitic slurs were heard uh, during this attack? Well, the relatives um, were in their house and they say that, according to one report, they said, the report said that they heard what was going on outside. They didn't say exactly what was said. As somebody who grew up in Baltimore's Jewish community, what was the anti-Semitism like there? Is it something um, that was experienced on a regular basis? What can you tell us about that? First, I want to say that everyone knows Baltimore has a high crime rate. It's no surprise that there is violent crime in Baltimore. However, specifically targeted at Jews, it was not ever something that was common. Petty crime, robberies, once in a while maybe a beating, but not necessarily something that was targeted towards Jews because of the fact that they were Jews. Now, I remember several instances growing up where swastikas were tagged on schools or other institutions, um, on the sports field in middle schools and high schools, maybe some anti-Semitic slurs were thrown about. Um, harassment on college campuses here and there, but nothing that was really violent to this nature, which is why it's so surprising, by the way, and which is why I think that the local Jewish community, they keep a really close relationship and a great relationship with the community surrounding them. They wouldn't cry wolf like this. Uh, an accusation like this, I'm sure, is extremely, extremely shocking for the community. And as you mentioned, it's a, a pretty tight-knit community. How is the community reacting right now, and how are they reeling from a, a report like this? The Baltimore Jewish community is about 95,000 Jews, which is big, and they're ranging between ultra-Orthodox to reform and everything in between. Now, we have many organizations, namely the Associated and the Baltimore Jewish Council, who are very involved, and many other organizations, the BZD, Baltimore Zionist District, um, and they have come together upon the, the rise in anti-Semitism in the U.S. this past year, which is at 14 percent, which is alarming to everyone, but specifically the Jewish community in Baltimore took it upon themselves to create a task force to combat this. And in the way that they are doing this is with advocacy, real partnerships and relationship buildings with other schools and communities in the area, just to educate everyone around them to who we are really and so that we can all get, get along. Interesting. Hannah Rifkin, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. Are you looking to relocate? A new luxury real estate development in Jerusalem wants you to have the holy city in your very own backyard. ILTV's Emmanuel Kadosh went to go check it out. The city of Jerusalem. There's absolutely nothing like it in the world. Israel's capital is filled with so much meaning and ancient history from the centuries-old pathways, the bustling Machne Yehuda market, the old city itself, and who could forget to mention the Western Wall. We went to check out the latest luxury residential complex to give you an idea of where you could potentially be living. So we are right now here at the Savion View Residential Building in the heart of Jerusalem. Tell me a little bit about the project. Yeah, so we are on the 21st floor. And this project is located on Jaffa Street, which is the main street that comes from the entrance of Jerusalem and goes to the old city. It might not look like it right now, but in less than two years, this is going to be one of the most luxurious real estate opportunities to buy in. You guys are not going to want to miss out. It's walking distance from some of the most historic places in the world. That's the light rail right there, no? Yeah, yeah, there's the light rail and the, the market is behind this building. So they're walking Makhneuda. distance from like 
uh, the, the best public transportation in Jerusalem. Mm, it's one minute. Yeah. Less than one minute. It's downstairs. It's in Jaffa Street. And the market is two minutes from here. Half of the apartment have been purchased already. Yeah. Families that want to leave here and investors from the United States and South uh, America. And we have Israeli people, most of them from Jerusalem, who are buying here either to live here or to invest. We have it here a one to three bedrooms apartment. We have also the penthouses with 360 degrees view. It's going to be 27 floor building. We're going to have two roof gardens. One is 400 square meter and the other is 200 square meters. I mean, everything you need is a walking distance from here. Whether you visit Israel a lot and are looking for a beautiful, luxurious vacation home, or maybe you've decided you want to make Aliyah and are looking for that perfect home, or maybe you're looking to invest. The Savion View is the spot to check out. You can't be wrong here because this is a very, very prime and unique location and it's a very safe opportunity to invest in. The Savion View project is actually designed by one of Israel's leading and oldest real estate companies, Africa Israel. Africa Israel has been around in more than 80 years. Uh, we build uh, all over the country, from the north until uh, Jerusalem, uh, from Kharish, uh, Petah Tikva, Nes Ziona. For people who love Jerusalem, this is the place to be. With all of this going on, you can sometimes forget that Jerusalem has become a very modern and up-to-date city with some of the most delicious restaurants, top universities, beautiful museums, and of course, a ton of shopping. So if you're already considering moving to Jerusalem, definitely check out the Savion View residential projects because this could be your backyard. And that's it for ILTV's weekly review. I'm Aaron Porras. See you next week.